last week I was in a consulting engagement with a customer and we had a discussion around parallelism, execution context, wait types, and how this wait information shows up differently when we look at session information versus when we look at task level information. The discussion was very fruitful and for some of the people involved in the discussion, it was really an eye opener. And after this meeting was over, I thought it's a good time to record a video around this discussion. So this tutorial and this video is about that discussion and I just wanted to really show everything that we talked about and you know what really was the eye opener there. And that's why because there are so many things that we discussed and there were so many learnings it was very difficult to come up with the exact perfect you know video title for this tutorial. So I'm kind of calling it parallelism, execution context and wait types and whatnot. I mean, it's not important what the video title is. What is important is, do you learn something new or probably is this also an eye opener for you? Now, remember, if the learnings here in this tutorial is an eye opener for you, please promise me that you are going to put that down in the comments. OK, so let's get started with the demo. I just can't really talk more theoretical. It is all demo stuff. So as always, we are going to use AdventureWorks 2016 for the purpose of demo. So let's change the context. Execution plan is turned on, actual execution plan. So control M uh, is turned on. Now there is a query here, very simple, straightforward. Select start from sales order detail. Now I will not do the order by right now because I just want to show this to you step by step. So let's run this very simple select statement and execute this. Now, whatever the number of records here is 1.120,000 something, whatever it is, let's jump over to the execution plan. And you can see that this is a serial execution, which means a single threaded execution. How can you make this out? Well, you know it, this does not have any parallel operators, you know, those iterators with you know, that yellow uh, symbol with the arrows. So that's not there. And I, that's just a easy visual indicator for us to see that this is a serial plan. Now I will just make this execution a little more costly for the optimizer. So I will add the order by clause. So I'm just going to add the order by clause order by order quantity. Now you would say, hey, hey, I mean, uh, order by order quantity. I mean, it's such a simple thing. Why would this be expensive? Well, the cost threshold of parallelism is set to the default value of five and you and I, we all know that the value five is a low value. So the cost is going to go beyond five. There's no unit of measurement out there. So the optimizer is going to perceive this as an expensive query and will try to parallelize it. Okay. Which means multi-threaded execution, which means the SQL Server engine is going to allocate more threads to this execution. Let's do this. So we will select this again and execute this now. The moment execution is complete, jump over to the execution plan. And now you will see the plan has changed slightly and you can see a few parallel operators out there. You can see gather streams and even these ones, right? If you look at the sort operator and the clustered index scan and clearly these are parallel operators in this plan, which means more than one thread, right? And they will be X number of threads. That's not important, but number of threads are being put together, put to work to execute this query. Now, this was the simple part actually, but you are getting the context. Now let's talk about the tricky part here. So what I'm going to do in connection to, I am going to begin a transaction and I am going to modify a few records. I'm going to change the value of line total to something where sales order ID is something. The idea here is to just lock a few records, nothing more. There's no business logic behind this update statement. The idea is just to place an exclusive lock on a few records. So let's do that. We will take this to connection two. I'm going to copy this code, create a new query window. And this is my connection two. So I'm going to bring it on the right side there and let's fire this up, execute. And 
okay line total cannot be modified because it is either computed column or this is result of an union operator wonderful which means this is an error okay so i will change this to something else let's see what are the other columns out there there is um there is order quantity okay let's just change this to order quantity okay as i said the idea is just to lock a few records no specific business logic out there very dummy transaction okay so let's just go and execute this okay this works so we have 12 ref records affected and so there is an exclusive lock on these 12 rows remember this is an in-flight transaction begin trans so there is no commit no rollback i mean that's purposely being done for me to show whatever, whatever i'm trying to show you now let's jump over to connection 3 and watch a few things i'm just going to copy this entire thing first and i'll show you what i'm trying to do let's create a new query window and simulate connection 3 or user 3 whatever you want to call it but before we do all of this um let's jump over to the first one and okay first before i fire the select statement let's go here and first look at dim exec request and this is session id 86 now look at this session id 86 in session id 86 now what i'm going to do is okay just a step back session id 56 here has the update statement this is done this is an in-flight transaction exclusive locks are already placed now what i am going to do is from session id 86 which let's say call as the first connection or user one I am going to fire the same select statement that we ran just now to show you those parallel operators, etc. This is what we are going to do. Now, before I do this, I will jump over to my third window and show you that. And this is session ID 86, the connection one, right? Like, just let me just zoom in and show this to you here, 86. Okay. Now, if I jump over to this session three here, if I filter on session id 86 and i'm trying to extract data from dim exec request just see what happens okay when i execute this here you see there is no active request simply because this is an idle session and the we are we haven't fired any statement out from there so this is all good now now we will do this okay so in connection one let's fire the same select statement with an order by uh, clause there and you know this is going to be a parallel execution so let's do that and as we execute this now the data doesn't come out because you know this is waiting because this connection this user wants shared lock and at least one row is being locked there right exclusive uh, locks are being placed so there are 12 rows that are locked and now you have this waiting uh, going on so this is going to wait infinitely now let's jump over to this one and what we want to do is find out what is my query waiting on or simply in system exec request let's try to see what does what information this dmv gives you about session id 86 see now you and i know that okay session id 56 was running an update statement so a few rows are logged session id 86 is running a select star which means you want all the data but at least a few rows are locked so the entire query is waiting you and i know this let's see what sql server says okay so we are going to look at system exec request where session id is 86 let's go and execute this and now you will see session ID 86, et cetera, uh, status is suspended, of course, because the request is now waiting. And if you keep scrolling on the right, this is a select statement, you get SQL handle, connection ID, et cetera. Wow, this is super interesting. You see blocking session ID is zero and the wait type is CX packet. And this entire thing is very, very misleading here because uh, honestly this is not the correct information so to say because we know that session id 56 is actually blocking but it says blocking session id 0 and wait type if you know something about wait types and wait statistics you would know that cx packet waits pop up when there is parallelism right and in but in this particular scenario it's not much to do with CX packet. It's to, it's to do more with lock weights. So I was probably expecting LCKMS here because we are waiting on uh, weight type LCKMS, which stands for lock mode shared. Why? Because session ID 86 wants to acquire shared locks. That is what it should be showing. But 
session uh, dim exec request, this DMV is kind of misleading us here with this particular thing. Now, what you are looking at, and this was really all the discussion about, what you are looking at is session level information and that can be misleading when you are troubleshooting all these locking blocking scenarios when you're looking at weight types weight statistics when you are tuning query for better performance you should be looking at task level information not session level information so what i am going to do that okay i have this dmos weight stats cx packet etc that's not important here right now but what you should be looking at sys dmos weighting tasks I do the same thing here. We have sysdim exec request where session ID is 86. Now I am just replacing the DMV and I'm going to do this with sysdim OS waiting tasks. Let's do this. Let's go and execute this. And now what you're going to see here is a lot of threads are waiting. And important thing to note, all these threads that you see here are waiting. They show up as session ID 86, okay? And then why they are showing up as session ID 86? Simply because this is a multi-threaded execution. So for this one single execution coming from session ID 86, multiple threads have been assigned and these multiple threads are being referenced or referred by the execution context ID. Now this was another part of our discussion, right? The execution context ID. So each thread here gets an execution context so you can clearly see so you have zero then you have one then you have two three four so on and so forth now why four threads or why not eight threads and whatnot well um, for all of that you can watch another video where i talk about cpu affinity and parallelism etc etc i'm not going to get into that right now because that will dilute this demo so what you could see is multiple threads are doing the job and they all come up from session ID 86. You and I know that this is a blocking scenario, nothing to do with CX packet really. And that is very evident from this output. So you, could, you can see that one of the threads here, execution context two, is waiting on LCKMS, right? That is what I was talking about, lock mode shared. So in hindsight, what really is happening is while other threads are able to do their job, they're not being blocked, they get access to their rows, their set of data, but at least one thread gets logged out there because this is that thread, execution context ID2, which is trying to access those logged rows and it's being forced to wait and the wait type is LCKMS. But until and unless this one thread um, you know doesn't get access to the data all of the threads are literally waiting for you know the so-called sister thread to complete so of course the overall execution is incomplete and then what really happens is this is what we call as you know the benign weight statistics which is uh, that uh, CX packet wait time will also go up right because they're all waiting on CX packet so this this really here means uh, uh, this is really nullified in a way, misleading, because this CX packet simply means that they are waiting for their parallel threads to complete. But actual root cause of the performance issue is the blocking scenario, which you got to fix. It has nothing to do with CX, high CX packet wait time. You just see there's so many learnings coming up from here. You know, suddenly one fine day when you look at weight stats information, you will see, wow, CX packet is just so high. And you know, you might be on a, on a box with 32 cores or 64 cores. And imagine if one thread is waiting on LCKMS, let's say this waited for 300 seconds. So that thread waited for 300 seconds. So you would actually see LCKMS wait time going up by 300 seconds but you will have like a dozen other threads where wait time will go up by 300 seconds each because they were waiting on CX packet. So CX packet will be like, assuming one dozen threads, will be like 12 into 300 seconds. That will be the total wait time given this specific execution. You see, everything is everything gets so blurry and so misleading. So overall, the takeaway from this tutorial, from this demo for you is, CDL executions are pretty straightforward, but when it comes to multi-threaded execution, understand that there is one controlling thread, the execution context ID for that is zero that you can see in the second row, and then you have those worker threads that are actually doing the job. 
SQL Server Execution Engine will assign some amount of work to each thread, which means each thread is really dealing with certain set of rows and they're doing their job in parallel. And each thread gets its own execution context, which is visible from the context ID out there. Whenever you see a performance issue, you know, like, you know, I gave the simple example of locking and, you know, a blocking scenario, but it could be something else. Focus on the thread, focus on the task, what that specific task is waiting on, not the overall request, not the overall session. And then when you look at these wait stats and wait types, this is where you got to be a little more smart that, okay, you know, all this high numbers of CX packet uh, wait time is just kind of a bit misleading and nullified because the actual performance issue, uh, issue is with some other wait type. And that is why, you know, we kind of focus more on task level wait information versus session level wait information. All right, hope this was some new learning for you, hoping so. And if this was an eye opener and something new, you got to put that down in the comments section. Okay, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter at the rate SQL Maestros and myself A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.